Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box at the bottom. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out our Discord as well and all that stuff. You got the links down there. In this video, we're gonna just fully make player movable and the player is gonna be able to Kind of move around the world basically that's what that's the plan for today and also to create the swag balls class so we can pick up swag balls in the future but let's start off with player now we rendered the player but there's no real way to update the player but before we do that i'm gonna add a little um a few parameters here to the constructor of player in player.h so what i want you to do is i want you to do a float x and float float y and this will help us create the player at a certain position wherever we want that player to be and I'm gonna just do that right there and you can send those into init variables but I'm just gonna go ahead and initialize the players position right here now in its shape is gonna be more for the size the color the outline this is gonna be for just specifically the position so you, what you want to do is set position x, y right up here. That sets the player's position. Again, I do recommend you comment all your functions for your own sake and for future job, you know, for whatever future job you have for that sake, because you're going to have to do that. Uh, but let's keep going. We set the position to wherever we, wherever we want it. We can make this easier on ourselves. We can set this to actually... Uh, Let's put it in the h file. We can do this easy for ourselves. We'll just say 0.f. Give these default parameter values. Um, and that will make sure we don't really have to give any values in there. Anyway, once that's done, we're going to start off by letting us move the player around. Now, this is going to do... It's going to be in a few ways. This is going to be keyboard input. And we're going to have window bounce collision those two things are gonna happen let's start off with the movement at least because that's the fun part if SF keyboard is key pressed that's our function that SFML uses to check if a keyboard button is pressed and then you have to specify which button you want to check for let's start off with left so this is gonna be left movement and then we need to get this keyboard enum enumeration for a so there's a code here for the button A. We send that into this function that SFML has, and that's going to check if that button is being pressed. And if you hover over it, you'll see what key code that has, because that could be important sometimes to, to know. You can also go to the keyboard, right-click that, go to the de definition, and you'll see all of the key codes, and you can hover over them to, to see what number they, they actually have. That's a great way when you're making custom keybinds. Anyway, once this is done, if we press A, we're going to move the player a certain direction. And how much do we want to move the player? Right? How much do we want to move the player? We need a float movement speed variable. And this movement speed is going to decide how fast the player moves. This movement speed equals, let's say, let's say 10.f. It's probably going to be pretty fast. That's great. This actually brings me to a very important point, something we did miss in game.cpp. I want you to just go ahead into game.cpp, go into your init window, and you say this window set frame rate limit to whatever you want. I'd say we keep the same, right? This is important actually for us, all of you and me, to keep the same frame rate because that will dictate how fast things move, how, how long, far things move per button click and everything. If we have the same frame rate limit, uh, they will all move the same. There's a way to make it frame rate independent, and we will talk about that, like I said, in the last series. But there's not time for that yet, because it's a little complicated. But just set it to 60, all right? Set frame rate limit 60. Go back into player.cpp and set that to 10. Now, this is going to be the same for all of us. Once that is done, go back to your function update. We, to keep, you know what? To keep the tradition, let's do this. Void update 
input like that. Let's create a separate function for this. This is a better idea. And just go ahead and define that function real quick. Once that's defined, go ahead, jump into that function, copy this code that you had, paste it in update input, all right, from update to update input, and call that function here, update input, boom. That's good, because now we're not going to have to send the window bounds in here. This will just be done in this little function. Then we'll do the window bounds collision out here. Good. Once that is done, let us move the shape. Let us move the shape. Shape dot move is a great function as FML. This will this is different from set position as set position just sets the position to whatever you give it. Move will take the current position of the object and add whatever you give here to its current position. So we'll move the object each iteration. That's a good difference to note. This movement speed and we're going in the negative direction. A is in the negative direction to the left. All right, you, you're going to the left and you have to do minus. So we're going to do minus movement speed. Each click of this uh, beautiful A button and then 0 0.f is going to be our uh, movement in the y direction because we're not moving in the y direction. We just want to move in the left direction with movement speed. I'm going to copy this. Now, this is also a good thing. You want to do else if for A and D because you're not going to hold A and D at the same time, but you might want to hold A and W or A and S at the same time. And then that's why we're going to have else if else if and then if else if as well for the y direction. You'll see what I mean. All you have to do now is you have to just remove that minus here and you're all good. Let's paste that again. Now we're going to change. Don't forget to change the keyboard key as well. We're going to change this to W now. So you're going to understand what I said. Just cut that out. Put a 0.f there instead on the X axis. And on the Y axis, you do a minus this movement speed. So W as well is going to go up and we're going minus in the Y direction. If you want to go down on the screen, you do a plus. And you'll see that happen just now. I'll just paste this and we'll do an else if because we're not going to hold W and S at the same time. That's why we have an else if here as well. Pre just make that into an S and remove the minus sign. Now, if all goes well, it should be updating. We need to go into game update here and actually call this player dot update. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And the player is being rendered. That's good. Once that is done, we should be able to move our player around in the world, but we have no window collision as of yet. We need to make sure we have window collision. All right, so I'm moving my player around with the 10 floats. There we go with the 10 floats and that's working just fine. The next step is going to be a window collision. Now, we might not be able to do that in this video, but what I am going to do is I'm going to send the window into this player update wherever I put it in update here in the update function. I'm just going to send this window. Okay, and it's going to bug out because we haven't really added that here yet. But what I want you to do is SF render target pointer target. All right. And copy that and put that into the update in the player.h file as well. Now it won't bug out. Now it's going to be fine. And in game.h, game.cpp, it's going to be fine as well. So it's sending in the window as a pointer and we're all good to go. To do the window bounds collision, all we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to check the size of it. So I think you can get it from target, target size. Yeah, you can get the size and we'll be able to check if we're outside or not. We're going to do that in the next video. In this video, before we end, we're just going to create the swag balls class because that's important. So we can start working on it in the new, in the next video. So I'm just going to call it swag ball. Stupid name. It's a very stupid name, but it's it's a name that I chose because I'm stupid. But we'll keep that. Whatever name you want. If you just want to call it balls, I won't ban you from the channel. Uh, so, yeah, do whatever you want. 
I'll call it this and we're good. Like I said in the last video, please check out the video about Linux and code blocks. If you're working on code blocks, you're having issues with Pragma 1s, you're having issues with some things we're using, some code stuff we're using in this series. Uh, just make sure you, you follow that tutorial. Also check if you can click in the C++14 standard in your code blocks and just you, you Google that, YouTube that, and you'll find a tutorial on how to do it. If you're on Linux, check out make file stuff, how to how to link things. Also ask in the Discord. We got a lot of good people who really know about Linux and how to do make files. So I'm sure we'll be able to help you there. Uh, and there you go, guys and girls. We have the swag balls class ready. We're not going to do much more on that right now. Uh, in the next video, we'll keep working on this. Please check out the description box. Join the Discord. Drop a like, subscribe. Yeah, all that stuff. Drop a comment as well if you if you like, if you have suggestions. If you do have any cool projects you're working on, upload it to YouTube link it to me and let me just go ahead and, and put that up. I'll, I'll do a little credit for you and I'll show off your stuff in a little compilation. So go ahead and do that. Appreciate it. Take care. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.